What's up guys? I just wanted to do a quick video that was sparked by two events this morning where I was like, let's pull the camera out. We got to film a video about how today is a buyer's market. And the two things that happened first was we're prepping for this whatnot show. All of these books are, are going to come to whatnot tomorrow. Everything starts at $1. And I asked young Marcus to put together a box of books that were worth around a hundred bucks. Went through and looked at them. I'm like, hey, this is actually going to be a good show. And then I started going through the other books. So what happened was we purchased a couple collections, uh, Young Marcus priced them out. And so some of them, like I haven't even seen in person. Um, and so uh, I was going through these books and I thought, this isn't worth a hundred bucks. This isn't worth a hundred bucks. This isn't worth a hundred bucks. And so sure enough, um, these books have come way down in price. So for example, this one right here, Guardians of Nowhere, number one, I have price memory of this book being like a one to two hundred dollar book just an awesome Gwen Stacy Gwenham cover and so I said Marcus can you go like double check GPA on this we pulled it up and sure enough the last sale was right around thirty five dollars and I was just like what in the world I mean the thing is that I have price memory about this book and price memory can be detrimental to you in multiple ways, okay? So first of all, if you have price memory of something like a book that you own, and we're gonna get back to this in a second about a conversation I just had with a collector uh, this morning as well that sparked this video, but if you have price memory of what something used to be worth, like if you paid $200 for this book and now it's really only worth $35, you know, that could be detrimental to you if you're actually looking to sell the book because your price memory has nothing to do with the current value of the book. And price memory can also be detrimental to you if you remember this book being $200, or as, just as an example, maybe not this actual particular book, but say you remember a book being worth $200 and you see it selling for $100 and you think, oh, I just got a $200 book for $100 because you have price memory of the peak of the market when it was 200. No, you actually just got a $100 book for $100. You know, the current price is the current value of that book. So just be careful when you see, you know, uh, books that were going for crazy numbers. Now, on the same token, it's a buyer's market. Like, collectors rejoice. Now you can pick up all those books that you wanted to get, but you're like, no way I'm paying 200 bucks for that. And now if you can pick it up for 30 or $40, like, this is a great time to be a comic book collector. Here's another example. God Country number one, the second print. This is an option series by Donny Cates, a fantastic series. If you haven't read it, go pick up a, a trade paperback or something. It's definitely worth the read, and it's optioned, and I really do hope that they make it into a show because it could be killer. And I remember price memory of the subsequent prints of this because I think it goes up to like a fourth print being worth a lot of money. And I said, can you go pull this and check? And I think the last sale, what was it, like $19, Marcus? It was somewhere around 20 Somewhere around $20 for a 9.8 second print buyer's market folks this one is kind of hits a little close to home akira number one and 9.4 i was like this this isn't even worth 100 bucks and uh this one hits a little close to home because i think it was about six to eight months ago uh i gave young marcus a bonus i said you can pick out one book um from our inventory something around 500 bucks and he picked a Kira number one and a 9.8. It was around a $500 book at the time. And I said, the one caveat is you can't sell it. And he just informed me today, I felt so bad that he's been watching the price go down. And he was like, yeah, but you told me I couldn't sell it. And he's been watching the price go down month oh, after no. month after month. No. And so now it's down to around like a $300, $350 book for the 9.8. Um, and that was only, you know, six, eight months ago or something. Buyer's market, once again. This one really blew my mind. A Silver Age Brave and the Bold number 60, 3.0 from 1965. The first appearance of the new Wonder Girl, a silver age key, not even $100 according to, you know, most recent sales. It's the cover on this one, guys. The cover is uh, awful. I think Nick Cardi maybe could have, uh, you know, turned in something a little better for this key issue. That's definitely what's holding this one back. But that's just a couple examples. Make sure you're following us over on Whatnot. We're having a ton of fun over there. You also get a chance at $1,000 if you win two giveaways in the same show. We give away a ton of heat, a ton of books, um, and it's a ton of fun. This is going to be uh, on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, which we usually do it. But there's a link in the description for $15 towards your first purchase, uh, which you can get $15 off. Or you 
can pe pick up a free book if you're new to whatnot, and we always have stuff in the bite now for $15. We also have those monthly giveaways here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, comment, and like this video, you're entered to win two free slabs this month. And if you head over to BriceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter, uh, you're entered to win a free slab each and every month. This month, we're giving away two slabs. You also get first access to new collections as they come through the shop. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off all in-stock items. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this conversation that I had with a collector, really nice guy, um, but was looking to unload uh, some major keys. And he had price memory of what he has into the books. And I just want to pull up GPA, so let's hop into the computer and talk about some of these uh, maybe really good opportunities to get in on some Silver Age blue chip keys. So I got a phone call this morning from a really nice guy through Instagram and said, hey, I was just wondering if you'd be interested in buying any of these grails and gave me his phone number we actually talked on the phone it's always a lot more interesting i i prefer actually talking on the phone you can hear the person's voice and uh you know really you know s explain yourself and talk about things in more detail than just text back and forth you know usually with buying a collection it's just send me the list i'll crunch the numbers and make the offer and that's all there is to it with grails it's a little bit of a different conversation because you know um it just takes a little bit more talking it through. So the first book that he had was a 3.0 Amazing Spider-Man number one signed by Stan Lee. And I went and pulled up prices and I was just shocked at the current values and prices that Amazing Spider-Man number one was going for. Uh, so it was a 3.0. The last sale of a blue label was $7,800. And, you know, there was even lower sales than that uh, this year. One very low, low sale for $5,700. Another uh, low sale for $6,800. So, you know, I would put the value. There's also a couple higher than that, 93 93 and but I would put the fair market value today of a 3.0 at 7,800 now this one is signed by Stan Lee so I said I would give it a thousand dollar premium for the Stan Lee signature bringing it to 8,800 and then I offered 75% uh, of that and you know he was just like blown away that how low the price was he was like there's absolutely no way I know what I have into this book there's no way I can sell it I think he said for a seven thousand dollar loss so I think he paid uh, you know maybe around fifteen thousand or something for it signed by Stanley so totally understandable I absolutely get it I wouldn't want to take a big fat loss like that too I'm, and I even told him I'm like hey yeah just hold on to these man because this is this is definitely not the right time to sell if you bought at a little bit elevated uh, of a price but let's talk about the Stanley um, premium here a little bit typically a Stanley premium for a book that is like a non key issue is somewhere around two to three hundred dollars and then if it gets to be like a more significant key it goes up a little bit and then if it's on a blue chip key it goes up quite a bit depending depending on the book but an amazing spider-man one when i saw this and i'm like oh my god that is so freaking cool to have it signed by stan lee that as such an important key issue of spider-man um a thousand dollar premium i think is a very fair price for that but if you come and look at some sales of a 3.0 signed by stan lee i mean the last sale was six thousand nine hundred eighty, which is kind of suspect that might have been something that didn't really go through on ebay or something like that it's highly highly likely and the sale before that twelve thousand dollars you go back to 2021 man look at the spread look at the spread though but in 2021 you know which is right about the same market conditions as now this 3.0 signed by stan lee sold for seven thousand eight hundred dollars and it is kind of a rough copy for 3.0 but it has white pages 3.0 white pages signed by stan lee so it was definitely i i think at auction a 3.0 signed by stan lee would go for around eight thousand eight hundred dollars so um needless to say you know it, it, we weren't going to make a deal on this but the conversation was very interesting so the next book he's like well what about some of these other books i have a hulk number one in a 3.0 it has white pages and i go and i pull up gpa and i go oh good lord the last sale for a 3.0 white page Hulk number one is $10,800, which seems like an anomaly low, right? It seems like an anomaly low, but when you see these anomaly lows, quote unquote, on all of these key issues, at a certain point, you start to wonder, like, maybe it's not an anomaly low. And we go and we pull up the actual copy here. It's a 3.0 at Heritage. You know, it's not the best looking 3.0 I've ever seen, but I, it's not bad to the point where, you know, it doesn't have like writing all over the trade dress. It doesn't say, you know, Frank on it or something. It looks like a decent 3.0. Like, I don't think there's anything about this that would cause it to be, you know, a less valuable 3.0. Presents 
you know, relatively well. The full appearance, the trade dress, everything there is intact. This is on Heritage Auctions, sold for $10,800, May 6th of 2024. This is the most eyes, the biggest auction house in the world for comic books, has the most eyes on it, and it sold for $10,800. So it's kind of hard to say that that was an anomaly low. It's like, well, it had all the opportunity. It was at Heritage. It had all the eyes on it. Like, how can you say, like, that was just a good deal, you know, when, when everything is trending down? You know, and when you look at some of these bigger grades, like the 8.0 for the Hulk number one, also a similar trajectory. Um, you know, the, obviously this comes up way less often, and, you know, you would expect an 8.0 to have less volatility, but it seems to be following many of the same trends. 2023, a high price of 138. 2021, a high price of $188,000. So that is almost a 50% drop. Actually, it is a 50% drop from its high in 2021, $93,000. So the point being here is it's a buyer's market and what an awesome opportunity to be able to pick up a Hulk one for $10,800. I remember this exact book. It was a Hulk one 3.0. Um, but I was going after a white page copy. It was in 2022 and I saw it, it, it was available on Instagram for $24,000 and it was right around this time, June, July of 2022, $24,000 for a 3.0 white page copy. And I almost, almost pulled the trigger. I was so close to doing it. And I, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to hold off for right now. And then lo and behold, now the price is way, 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 come way down for that. So it's a buyer's market, awesome opportunity to pick up a book like Hulk One. If you've been after one, be patient, look at those auction houses. And the last book that we talked about was the biggest surprise to the collector was Amazing Spider-Man number 129. And um, he said, well, what about 929? I have a 9.8 Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of the Punisher. It's off white pages. And I pull up GP and I said, well, the last sale was 21000 He was like, what? For a 9.8? I was like, yeah, the last sale was $21,000. And I've actually sold several copies of ASM 129 and a 9.8 uh, recently, like within the past year or so. And man, it sucks. It sucks to see the price come down this much when, you know, you sell a book as a dealer to people that you care about or your friends, and then you turn around and see the price swing so much, it sucks. And, but you know, it's market conditions completely out of uh, our control. But look at the swing just like within like a week or two, March 23rd of 2024 to April 4th, within a couple weeks, you know, the price went from 28,750 to 21,000, a $7,000 drop just with one sale. So this is a 98 white pages QES certified take it with a, a you know grain of salt whether or not that demands a premium the Puget Sound collection I mean a 98 white's a 98 white in my opinion um but um it's, if it's not like a pedigree or something I I just I'm not sure that that's why this one demanded so much of a premium I think it's just market conditions you know cuz this $21,000 uh sale is also a 98 white page copy and so it's just wild, you know, that you can get this. I remember in this book peaked for $57,000 in 2022. It's a buyer's market and collectors can, you know, have a lot more confidence, in my opinion, more confidence today than during the peak explosion because stuff was just going so crazy. And now that we're seeing, you know, such a pullback, I would have more confidence, like, as a collector, buying a 129.98 today than I did last year. And the same for a Hulk one, you know, when you see it come back in line with the trend line and stuff like that, it's exciting times, you know, it's exciting times to be a buyer because it's a buyer's market. So that's it for this video, guys. It's a buyer's market. Collectors rejoice. There could be some really good opportunities to pick up some of these books that you've been, you know, eyeballing for a long time thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video don't forget those giveaways here on the youtube channel subscribe comment and like and at bricecomics.com if you sign up for the newsletter two free slabs two opportunities this month thanks as always for sticking with me to the end of the video we'll catch you in the next one bye